Did Parliamentary Speaker Andriy Porobi really call on Ukrainians to take to the streets? What are the main fakes about the European Union's Eastern Partnership Initiative? And did President Zelensky really say to take back Ukrainian territory by force in his inaugural speech? Find out here at Stop Fake, the place where we debunk Russian disinformation about Ukraine. I'm Marco Supran, so let's get to it. This past week, scores of pro-Kremlin media reported that Ukraine's parliamentary speaker, Andriy Porubi, called on Ukrainians to take to the streets and launch a new Maidan protest. Russian Defense Ministry mouthpieces Vezda, along with Ruskaya Vesna, Rambler, Goryacha Linia DNR, and others, said that Porubi took to Twitter on May 22nd to incite mass protests. You think that's the smell of your revenge that's in the air? Take another sniff. That's the smell of burning tires. Revenge shall not pass, Porubi tweeted in Ukrainian. Russian media twisted the tweet to mean that the speaker was calling for anti-government protests in Ukraine. In fact, Porubi's tweet was a quote from his address to parliament earlier in the day. Porubi was responding to pro-Russian opposition bloc deputy Alexander Dolzhenkov, who announced that after parliamentary elections, his party would initiate legislation to repeal a number of laws passed by the current parliament. Dolshenkov said his group intended to repeal the law on decommunization and the recently enacted language law. Whatever you say, your rating is negative and you are temporary phenomenon in politics, Dolshenkov lashed out at Porubi. Porubi responded that the Ukrainian people will never allow these laws to be repealed. You think you smell revenge in the air? Smell carefully. That's the smell of burning tires. Remember the Maidan. The Ukrainian people will not allow you to destroy these fundamental values in our country, Porubi said. Porubi did not call for anti-government protest in either his reply to Dolzhenkov or his tweet. Russian media, however, thought otherwise and not only devoted scores of articles pushing their spin, but even made it a central topic of discussion on the state channel Russia 1 60-minute program, a daily talk show for pro-Kremlin shouting heads in order to whip up more anti-Ukrainian hysteria in Russia. The European Union's Eastern Partnership Initiative celebrates its 10th anniversary this year, so we thought it might be interesting to look at some of the fakes that Russia's propaganda machine has assembled about the EU project in the recent past. As background, the Eastern Partnership provides an avenue for trade and economic strategy and also aims to build a, quote, common area of shared democracy, prosperity, stability, and increased cooperation between the EU and Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Belarus, Georgia, and Moldova. Each partnership member state determines the extent of its own cooperation with the EU. So here are the fakes. Fake number one. Using the Eastern Partnership, the European Union deprives Russia of markets and its traditional spheres of influence. Well, here's the fact. Eastern Partnership countries can trade with any country they choose, including Russia. Because of the Kremlin's aggressive policies, countries such as Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova and Azerbaijan have indeed reduced trade with Russia. However, Armenia and Belarus continue to successfully trade with Russia and even belong to the Eurasian Economic Union that is headquartered in Moscow. Fake number two. The Eastern Partnership promised Ukraine riches, but only delivered poverty. Ukraine's poverty is a favorite theme of Russian propaganda. Russian media claim that the signing of the association agreement between Ukraine and the EU in 2014 resulted in increased inflation and poverty. In fact, it is Russia's invasion of Crimea and Ukraine's Donbass that has produced poverty in the occupied territories. According to the World Bank, the poverty rate in Ukraine is on the decline. It currently stands at 4%, falling from 4.9% in 2017 and 6.4% in 2016. Fake number three. The Eastern Partnership promised Ukraine improved transport links with the EU, but has resulted in the collapse of Ukraine's infrastructure. The truth is that in recent years, the leading low-cost airlines have entered the Ukrainian market. Currently, some 110 flights out of Kyiv are serviced by low-cost airlines. Last year, Ukraine's central airport, Borispil, served more than 12.5 million passengers. Flight connections throughout Ukraine are growing and expanding. Today, Ukrainians can also reach the EU by train. Ukraine has launched dozens of trains which depart for EU countries on a daily basis. Fake number four. The Eastern Partnership is an aggressive project that has led to civil war in the Donbass region. 
The fact of the matter is that the Eastern Partnership Program has absolutely nothing to do with Russia's invasion of Ukraine's eastern Donbass. Ukraine has provided ample evidence of Russia's participation in the war. In January 2017, Ukraine's foreign ministry announced that Ukraine has filed a lawsuit with the UN International Court of Justice in order to bring Russia to justice for acts of terrorism and discrimination stemming from its illegal aggression against Ukraine. The lawsuit presents a detailed timeline of Russia's illegal aggression and evidence of Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea and the occupation of Donbass. And finally, a fake about Ukraine's new president, Volodymyr Zelensky, which was debunked by our colleagues at Voice of America and Radio Liberty's polygraph team. During President Zelensky's inauguration speech in Parliament, he said his first task would be to end the war in Donbass, a war that has taken 13,000 lives and wounded more than 30,000. History is not fair. That's true. It wasn't us who started this war. It wasn't us. But it's our job to end it. And we're ready for a dialogue. The head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Kadyrov, used his account on the Telegram messaging service to express discontent with Zelensky's statement, the Russian state news agency RIA Novosti reported. Kadyrov said Zelensky's speech had likely been, quote, edited abroad. Otherwise, he, quote, would not be making belligerent statements on the first day of his presidency, threatening to seize the territory of a neighboring state, quote, unquote. The Chechen leader was referring to the Crimean Peninsula, which he said, quote, was, is, and forever will be an integral part of Russia. But did Zelensky actually threaten to seize any territory, neighboring or otherwise, by force? Quote, both Crimea and the Donbass region are Ukrainian lands. We didn't just lose the territories, we lost the most important thing, the people, Zelensky said. A March 2014 United Nations General Assembly resolution declared that the Russian-led referendum to annex Crimea, carried out under military occupation, had no validity and cannot form the basis for any alteration of the status of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea or the city of Sevastopol. Zelensky did not say anything about taking any territory back by force. He simply reiterated that annexed Crimea and occupied Donbass are Ukrainian territories. He said that after ending the war in Donbass, the next challenge will be, quote, the return of Ukraine's lost territories, adding that it was, quote, impossible to lose something that rightfully belongs to us. Kadyrov might want to brush up on his Ukrainian language comprehension skills because taking back what is yours and seizing what belongs to another are two very different things. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on the Stop Fake website. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, send them along to our communications coroners for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.